Ciao. Whether you speak Italian or not, you'll probably recognize this Italian greeting as one of the most common ways to say hello to someone in countless countries around the world, not just Italy. But while the use of ciao is widespread and universally known, its origins aren't. What you may not know is that ciao and many other everyday words come from none other than the most fascinating and idyllic city in the world, Venice. In this video, we'll take a look at 14 everyday words that come from the Venetian language that are now used in English and many other languages too. But how did these everyday words travel from Venice and enter English and many other languages? To give you a brief background, the Venetian language spread widely for commercial reasons due to the great importance of the Republic of Venice as a maritime superpower in trade. As a matter of fact, Venetian was spoken in all places where traders engaged in business, which means, at the very least, in all coastal areas of the Mediterranean. But it is mainly due to the great migration of Venetians in the 20th century that some terms are now used all over the world. Many of these words described concepts or things that originated in Venice itself, such as quarantine, marionette, ballot, spritz, just to name a few. Curious to hear about other Venetian words that we still use in English? Pronti? Ready? Cominciamo! Let's get started! Ciao ciao, mi chiamo Michelle, sono la Intrepid Guide, la vostra guida per imparare l'italiano, per viaggiare o per entrare in contatto con le vostre origini italiane come me, attraverso il mio metro originale 8020. Hi, my name is Michelle, I'm the Intrepid Guide, your guide to learning Italian for travel or to connect with your Italian heritage like I did, all by using my unique 8020 method. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click on the bell notification so you get an alert when I post more videos like this one. Learning Italian? Make sure you download my free guide with seven mistakes in Italian and how to avoid them. Just click on the link in the description below this video and I'll send you your free guide. Here are 14 everyday words you never knew came from Venice. Number one, marionette. The term marionette, in Italian marionetta, is a word that comes from the Venetian language. It is believed that the etymology of the name derives from Maria di Legno, literally wooden Marys, a sort of votive offering to the Virgin Mary by the city of Venice for having miraculously snatched 12 beautiful Venetian girls from the hands of the Barbary pirates in 944. But let's take a step back. Initially a commemorative feast that was held every year to celebrate this event, 12 girls decadently dressed in gold and precious stones were led in procession through the Cali the streets of Venice. Soon enough, however, the choice of Maria became difficult and all Venetian girls wanted to enjoy such a privilege. And the patrician's desire to show off turned into a race to the top that was no longer financially sustainable. It was decided to replace the girls with carved wooden statues called Maria, or given their natural size, Marione. The suffix orne in Italian is augmentive, meaning it is hooked onto the end as a word to denote largeness. Afterwards, the statues were reproduced in a smaller size by toy makers to amuse children and to be sold to the public. The reproductions of these figures were called marionette, a word which today indicates wooden figures or puppets manipulated from above by strings attached to their jointed limbs. Number two, pants. To stay on the subject of theatre, here's another word you probably had no idea came from Venice. It's pants, being the long trousers as referred to in American English. If you are a fan of theatre or are familiar with the Commedia dell'arte, then the origin of this term is quite logical. As a matter of fact, one of the characters of this theatrical genre is called Pantalone, known as the servants Harlequin and Columbine, a miserly and greedy merchant whose disguise is nowadays used as a typical Venetian carnival costume. This character is represented wearing tight ankle length trousers and that's where the name comes from. It seems that this piece of clothing was so popular among Venetian people that even in France, the citizens of the Serenissima were called pantalons. Number three, ciao. As we learned earlier, ciao is a widespread greeting that originated in Venice. The word is a contraction of ciao and its original meaning was, I am your humble slave or at your service. It was a form of reverent greeting and devotion used with important people or perhaps to court a lady. 
According to scholars, Schau derives from the Latin sclavus, which translates to slave. Surprisingly, this form of greeting only became part of the Italian language at the beginning of the 20th century, yet it quickly spread and it is used, albeit in different writings and spellings, in many languages around the world today. Number four, ghetto. Now this term is said to derive from a Venetian term for foundry. The term originated in 1516, when the Jewish community of Venice was closed off in an area of the city that today is still the heart of the Venetian Jewish community and home to synagogues and other religious institutions. At this time, there was a copper foundry in the area called getto, meaning casting in Italian, which was gettata for a molten metal. Now, during the 16th century, the term ghetto spread throughout Europe and began to refer to the tragic episodes of racism during the Second World War. Nowadays, the term is used all over the world to indicate a place where ethnic minorities or marginalized social groups live. In modern Italian, however, the word is non-offensive and non-racist because it mostly refers to the aforementioned historical facts, especially those in Venice. Number five, gondola. It's not hard to guess where gondola originates since it indicates a kind of boat that can only be found in Venice's canals. The term gondola probably came from the verb dondolare, meaning to rock, referring to the movement of this boat on the water. Another explanation is that gondola is the Venetian version of the medieval Greek kondura, which in fact meant boat. Number six, calle. Same as for the word gondola, the word calle immediately brings to mind the city of Venice. Coming from the Latin word calis, this word became calle in Venetian and is used to refer to the characteristic narrow streets and alleys of Venice. The term was lost in Italian, which now uses words strada or via for street but it was kept in Venetian and it even spread to Spanish, which also uses calle for street. Number seven, laguna. The word laguna or lagoon comes from the Latin lacuna or lacus, meaning pond, hole or empty. Now laguna was originally used in reference to Venice and afterwards it spread to refer to swampy, shallow, brackish water beside a sea, which was separated by pieces of land. Did you know that the Venice Lagoon is the largest lagoon in the Mediterranean Sea? Its surface area extends for about 550 kilometers squared. In 1987, the entire territory was included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. Number eight, Lido. Similar to Laguna or Lagoon, the word Lido comes from the Latin litus, meaning shore or bank. Nowadays, the word has gained the reputation of being a luxurious and chic holiday destination in a seaside resort. Originally, it referred to the coastal strips that separated the Venetian lagoon from the open sea. Today, Venice's Lido is known as one of the most popular seaside resorts in Italy. It is half an hour from the city and it is about 12 kilometers long. Its transformation began at the end of the 19th century when villas and hotels were built. Number nine, quarantine. Never has this word seemed more relevant. This word actually has ancient origins. Between 1347 and 1359, the Black Death killed approximately 30% of the population of Europe and Asia. In order to prevent the spread of contagion, any ship arriving in the Venetian port suspected of carrying the contagious people or animals were forced to undergo an isolation period of 40 days. The isolation was referred to as quarantena from the Italian quaranta, meaning 40. The 40 day period is due to the belief that after this time, a plague victim was no longer contagious. In reality, the disease was spread by rats and fleas, which were still very much alive after the quarantine. Now, the Venetian government was the first one to adopt this method and to introduce restrictive measures to try to contain infections. In 1468, the Lazzaretto Nuovo was established in the lagoon, where anyone suspected of being ill was isolated for 40 days. If infected, the sick were eventually taken to the Lazzaretto Vecchio, which was located on the old island of St. Mary of Nazareth, from which the word Lazzaretto, a quarantine station, itself derives. Number 10, Gazzetta or Gazette. If you read print newspapers, you should know that you are perpetuating a Venetian tradition that is more than 500 years old. As a matter of fact, during the 16th century, the Serenissima decided to distribute a notice sheet with official news on the progress of the crisis with the Turkish Empire published with just a few pages was sold for the price of due soldi, two coins. And do you know what the Venetian coins were called? 
Gazzetta. The name entered the Italian language with the word Gazzetta, now a popular sports newspaper. And this spread to other languages too, becoming synonymous with a periodical of news for the inhabitants of the given area. Number 11. Ballot. The English word ballot also has its roots in the Venetian language. It derives from the word ballotta, which was the ball used in Venetian elections to choose the doge, the sovereign of the Venetian state. This event followed a very complicated procedure in order to ensure that the vote was completely impartial and transparent. At the heart of the whole operation were a number of gold and silver balls, the balotte, which were placed in an urn and drawn by the senators at various times. This term then flowed from Venice into the Italian language as ballotaggio and beyond. It was soon taken up by the United States as ballot and France ballotage. Why did it spread? When these new democracies had to choose an electoral system, they turned to the only example of democracy that existed in 1700, the Venetian one. Number 12, Casanova. The word Casanova is used in Italian, English and many other languages with the slightly negative meaning to refer to a man dedicated to amorous adventures, an unscrupulous seducer who has many lovers. We take this name from Giacomo Casanova, a Venetian writer and adventurer who lived in the 18th century. Casanova was known for always being on the lookout for gallant adventures, in which he was remarkably successful. He was a cosmopolitan, a spy, a multifaceted genius who embraced poetry and alchemy. His incredible life is narrated in his autobiography, Histoire de Malvi, in which we find a detailed account of his countless gallant adventures, as well as his political intrigues and magical practices. He approached magical arts when he was little, thanks to his grandmother, and then he became interested in alchemy, occult sciences and exotic brotherhoods, mainly to amuse people and be the centre of attention. Number 13. Arsenal. The term arsenal in Italian or Venetian is arsenale, refers to an establishment or factory used for the construction, repair, storage and supply of arms and ammunition, or a place where military ships are built and maintained. The term developed from Arabic da al sina, meaning the house of industry or factory, from which the words da sina and therefore arsenale are derived from the Venetian language. Later on, this Venetian word spread into 14 other languages, including English. It's not surprising that the Serenissima adopted this word, given its important naval tradition, legacy as a maritime republic, and, or more generally, the insular position of Venice. In the 16th century, the Venetian arsenal reached the peak of its production. Number 14. Spritz. Last but not least, here is another great invention whose origin is attributed to Venice. The spritz. Many people in Venice, but also in other places, take credit for this invention. The most accredited hypothesis is that this drink was born in the Osteria Antico Calice, and it first consisted of half a glass of wine drunk in a calice or goblet standing at the bar. As a matter of fact, in the 1700s, wine merchants in Venice used to set up shop in the shadow of St. Mark's Bell Tower, moving their wares around during the day to keep out of the sun. This is how the colloquialism prendere un ombra went from grab some shade to grab some wine. Later on, during Austrian domination, the ombra was diluted with soda. The current name for spritz comes from the German word spritzen, which means to spray. Over the years, several new variations were added. Aperol, Campari, Select and so on, creating the modern drink we know today. Still today in Venice, there are many different ways to make a spritz, which is made according to personal taste and inspiration. Allora, eccoci qua. So there you have it. Who would have thought you knew so many Venetian words? Crazy, right? How many of these did you know? Let me know in the comments. Are you serious about learning Italian? Got a trip coming up or want to be able to communicate with your Italian partner or relatives in Italian? Now you can learn Italian with my unique 80-20 method. Registrations are now open to join Intrepid Italian, my series of online self-paced video courses for beginners, advanced beginners and intermediate students who want to take the next step with an, an effective and strategic approach to learning Italian. As your guide, I walk you through each lesson step by step using my 80-20 method. 
My approach is different from traditional methods because I teach you the most important 20% of the language right from the beginning so you can start to speak straight away. Intrepid Italian includes everything you need to go from an absolute beginner to a confident intermediate speaker. Available in three levels, each course is perfect if you value learning at your own pace. Materials include video lessons, audio exercises, downloadable worksheets, bonus guides, a private support community, and lifetime access, all designed to streamline your learning whilst having fun. It even comes with my famous celebrate with the spritz guarantee. After 30 days of using Intrepid Italian, if you don't want to celebrate your newfound Italian skills with an Aperol spritz, you don't have to pay a penny. Cheers to that! For more details or to register, just click on the link in the description below this video. Ci vediamo lì! See you there! But hurry, registration's close soon. In the meantime, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications so you get an alert when I post more videos like this one. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy language learning! Un abbraccio! Ciao!